My name is Ava Howard. I am an upcoming senior at uh, Brentwood High School in Nashville, Tennessee, and I am here with Dr. Cassie Burleson. Um, she is a lecturer in the Journalism and New Media Department at Baylor University. Hi. Hi. Um, when did you get into journalism? Well, I guess you can't count the second grade, but when I was in the second grade, I wrote an inspiring short story on Chippy the Squirrel. Mm -hmm. um, and my high school principal read it. I thought it would be published in the school newspaper for the elementary school because we had school newspapers in elementary school then. And he rejected it. So I knew the heartbreak of journalism right off the bat from that story. But it didn't dissuade me from pursuing the craft. When I was in high school, I was lucky, had wonderful English teachers and the, the teacher who was the yearbook sponsor and the teacher who sponsored the newspapers gave me the opportunity to be both one year the yearbook editor and one year the newspaper editor while I was in high school. So I think that's really what started it. When I went to school for undergraduate school at Sam Houston State and became a beer cat, I didn't know you could major in journalism because our counselors at that time pretty much told all the women we could be a teacher or a nurse, and those were the options. And since my parents were both in the medical field, I thought I'd be a nurse. But since I fainted at the sight of blood, it didn't turn out to be such a great choice. So I did figure out, because they needed one more student to make a class in journalism, and I was it, because I happened to be the next person who showed up in the line. I took trade publications, which was a junior level course, when I was a freshman at Sam Houston State, and discovered that I loved the people in journalism. I loved the teachers, I loved my classmates, and I had always loved to write and do photography. So it all worked out just great. That's good. Uh, why did you get into journalism? For the money. I was a reporter at, uh, while I worked my way through college. So I was fortunate, I had a job. My first job in college was with the work study program. I made 60 cents an hour and I needed the money. But I went down to the local newspaper and told them I could write and they asked me about photography and I said, yes, I can take photographs. However, that was a little bit of a fudging statement because I had only taken photographs with the brownie camera, not the huge Yashika D with the big battery pack this big that I carried when I went to work as a reporter. So I ended up working 40 hours a week in college and taking 22 hours a semester. And it was wonderful because I was able to learn in the classes and then go apply it in the afternoons until about 11 o'clock at night every day at a weekly newspaper called the Huntsville Item under the guardianship and the guidance of a fantastic group of people, one of whom was Don Reed, who was our crusty old editor, gruff kind of a guy, who was full of love and who, by the way, wrote a book called Eyewitness, which was a book about his having seen more executions than any other living human being because he was the reporter who went to the prison to see the executions because they always have a reporter in the room. And he was very opposed to capital punishment because he said it wasn't meted out fairly. In other words, if you were rich, you probably weren't going to get the death penalty. And he fought all over the world against wow. capital punishment. So he became kind of a well-known person. That's great. And he, he taught me in that process that we have to stand up and try to make a difference in journalism. That's great. Um, would you say he influenced you into this career? I'm not sure it was Don Reed. Uh, I think it was probably a woman who was a reporter who was very tall and she looked like Jordan in The Great Gatsby, the, <laughs> the novel The Great Gatsby. She was a golfer. She was a very tall woman, very freckledy, very athletic. She was a good friend of my Aunt Margaret's. She smoked, she drank, she 
cursed. She did it all. She mm -hmm. had a glamorous life as a reporter for the Corsicana Daily Sun. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I want to be that woman. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, there was also Superman. Mm -hmm. And his sidekick was Lois Lane. Mm -hmm. So that looked like a fun job to me. Uh, and maybe a way to meet Superman. Only the Superman <laughs> thing didn't quite work out. <laughs> What are your favorite magazines slash newspapers to read? I love the New York Times, mm -hmm. and I love the video section, because now it's so much visual storytelling, and they do a great job with photography, documentary type work as well. Um, I trust what they say. I also like USA Today, because they started the idea of making newspapers look attractive, which we probably should have started several <laughs> decades yeah, earlier. Probably. Um, but thanks to them, we have color in newspapers, uh, and we have interesting writing. We have the use of graphics so that you can get information very quickly through the use of the graphics they use on the front page. Uh, I like, let me see, it was newspapers and magazines. magazines. With magazines, I can go the full range for you there. I like Better Homes and Gardens. Uh, I, I like Reader's Digest. I grew up reading Reader's Digest and learning a word every day because my dad emphasized we needed to learn a new vocabulary word every day. So at dinner, you'd always be asked, what's your word of the day? And I found Reader's Digest very helpful because they had this little part in there where it had that talked about words and new words. So I would just go there to find my words, <laughs> words of the day. It's a very handy reference book for me. And, um, and I, love, I love Vogue and yeah. any of the Glamour magazines. And I discovered while I was helping teach Sunday school last Sunday that I really liked Teen 17, <laughs> which was a big shock. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect to be interested in the articles, but we, were, uh, we had magazines spread all over the room, and we had National Geographic and Hot Rod Magazine, and uh, Texas Monthly is my all-time favorite magazine, by the way, because the writing in there is so good and the topics are always fascinating. Very favorite. Um, but one of the magazines was Teen 17, and the young woman beside me was flipping through the pages, and I thought, you know, I should look this up every once in a while to know what the 17-year-olds or younger are thinking. She was probably 12. So, but it was yeah. pretty interesting. Um, how do you think journalism has changed over the years from when it first started? You mean? Um, in America, like in the 1800s and uh, like that. Like well, it? it's changed in a lot of ways, as you probably already know, mm -hmm. so I won't enumerate those for you. Mm -hmm. So I'll answer in an odd way on that question. I don't think today's journalism has changed. I think it's old journalism mm -hmm. in that it has become much more partisan. Mm -hmm. In other words, I believe that publications should say, if they're going to try to be objective, they should be objective, not biased. And I think if they're going to be biased, they shouldn't say they are mm -hmm. fair and balanced. Mm -hmm. So I think in the older popular press, when newspapers started, you knew you were reading a partisan press. You knew if you read this one, you're going to get this point of view. If you read that one, you're going to get that point of view. And now, it seems to me that we have outlets that do provide objective journalism as much as it can be done, which is a very, very high goal. But if you want to really see objective world news, you have to be watching BBC, you know, from another country, so that you can get a balanced view of how the world is looking at a particular issue. So it calls on all of us if we really want to get that truth or get at the truth, it calls on all of us to make sure that we're getting a, you know, a cafeteria style menu of what we see, read, hear, yes. pay attention to. Um, how has social media impacted the field? Uh, enormously, and I think in really positive ways. Is that supposed to have a picture on it? Oh no, it just goes off. Okay, okay. all right, That's fine. cool. Mm -hmm. I just want to be sure. Um, social media are tremendously important in connecting people. I know some people think, oh, they're going to be these anonymous, offline faces that, you know, it's up to, up to no good sort of mentality. 
Uh, they said the same thing about radio when radio was new. They said the same thing about television when television was new. And I think trans uh, social media are transforming the world, and they really have done a huge um, community service to the globe by providing outlets that aren't censored. Um, lastly, uh, do you think journalism is a good career? Oh, yes. It's the best. <laughs> and, and I hope there, there you're talking about everything. Mm -hmm. You're talking about new media, you're talking about public relations, you're talking about print journalism and journalism in general. Yes, I can't imagine anything that would be Better. more fun. Mm -hmm. More fun, more interesting, more a way of educating yourself about people in the world. It's, it's a Every day is a growth experience in this field. And if you get interested in any particular topic, because you're going to evolve, you're going to change, you're going to get interested in new things. Let's say you get interested in um, sculling. I like sculling. Mm -hmm. You know, rowing in a single boat with the long oars, the skinny little boat, 24 to 27 feet long, sometimes 31 feet. Mm -hmm. Really fun. If I really got passionate about that particular sport and wanted to pursue that in journalism, then I would just find those outlets that write about that or find a way that I could then transform what I do at work every day into something that I also care about. It just so happens that I mostly care about teaching and being with smart people uh, and the university environment at Baylor has a very compassionate and caring faculty and our department is close. I have friends I've had for over 40 years, uh, not always here, but in different places. And it's fun because you go to work every day and it's hi to your friends and meeting new people all the time because the new students are just as invigorating to know. That's great. Well, thank you for letting me speak with you.